You know, it's crazy to think that in under six months, Google's Chrome OS will have been around for 15 years. What started out as a blog post and a three minute YouTube video that I remember watching like 50 times ended up finding its way onto a prototype laptop that we explored a couple years back and currently runs on almost two and a half percent of computers worldwide, which might not sound like much, but Chrome OS and more specifically Chromebooks have proven to be a successful endeavor for Google, especially especially in the educational market. But today, we're gonna talk about a Chrome OS device that was far less successful. This right here is the Google Chrome bit, sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. So if you were shopping around for a new computer back in 2015, you might've come across this thing, though if you were looking for a full-fledged desktop or laptop computer, you certainly wouldn't have picked it up because this thing is essentially what happens when Google decides to merge a Chromebook with something like a Fire TV stick. In fact, this is actually much closer to the Google Chrome Box line of machines, which are still available for purchase today and are manufactured by a few different hardware vendors. With the Chrome bit, there was only a single model ever produced by Asus, and of course that's the one that I have here. This is the Chromebit CS10, and it would have cost you $85 back in 2015. So let's open it up and see what you would have received. Now, the device itself, the first thing that I noticed when I took this out of the box off camera is it is a little bit larger than something like a Fire TV stick. Though to be fair, this Fire TV stick is much newer, so this is not really an accurate comparison. The older ones, I believe, were a little bit larger, but who cares? I mean, it's still a freaking stick that you're not gonna see anyway because it's gonna be like on the backside of your TV. Inside of this thing, we've got a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz rock chip ARM-based CPU. That's definitely a mouthful there. Uh, two gigabytes of memory and 16 gigabytes of storage, though of course that was going to be primarily used for the operating system because with this being a Chrome OS device, you were going to be saving all your you know documents and everything to Google Drive. And because of that, Google actually included 100 gigabytes of Google Drive storage for free if you purchase one of these things. However, it was only for two years. That kind of sucks. So you did have to pay for Google Drive after that two years if you wanted to continue using that storage. You also got a few other things in the box. We'll just go ahead and flip this over and get it all out. So of course you have your power adapter and you have your you know manuals and regulatory info and all that lovely stuff. You also have a couple of foam pads that I suspect you could use to put on the back of the, I almost said Fire TV stick, on the back of the Chrome bit so that it's not like rubbing against your TV and kind of like you know dangling back there and potentially scratching it. Notably we are missing the HDMI extension cable. That was included so that you know if you had a TV with the HDMI ports just on the back, um, that would definitely be a problem because this thing would just be sticking out. Um, I do have this one here that came with the Fire TV stick that I have, which of course will work just fine on here because it's just an HDMI port. So, you know, you would have something like this on the back of your TV if you uh, needed to, to use this thing. So yeah, there you go. But HDMI is not the only port that we have on this thing because on the other side, we've got a full-size USB-A port that you could use to plug in a keyboard or mouse. Um, and you'd have to use obviously a USB hub if you didn't have one of those like uh, keyboards that has like the trackpad built in, which would have probably been ideal, especially if you're hooking this thing up to your TV in your living room. But it also has Bluetooth connectivity, so if you had a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, you could just not even use the USB port at all. But yeah, that is everything you would have received. Let's go ahead and hook this thing up and uh, see what we can do with it in 2024. All right, so we've got a relatively janky setup here. I've got the Chrome bit plugged into my capture setup, and then I've got a USB hub plugged into the Chrome bit here so that we can connect to both a keyboard and mouse. And just like that, we're in. Okay, so it looks like this thing has been uh, reset to factory settings. Uh, I, I did purchase this used, by the way, if you couldn't already tell, there was no shrink wrap on the box. Now, in terms of which operating system version this is running, Google pushed out updates to the Chrome bit until November of 2020. So at the very least, uh, the version of Chrome OS that we're gonna be running here is gonna be just over three years old. So I've got it on my network. Um, we are going to, what is this optional help make Chrome OS better by automatically sending usage? No thanks. Uh, we'll accept and continue. 
and it should ask us to sign in with our Google account. So let's go into Chrome. First thing I wanna do is see what version uh, that we're running here. Well, we're running Chrome version 52, which I know is not the latest version, but interestingly enough, the copyright date down here says 2024. So I guess that gets updated, uh, but let's see if, um, oh, look at that, there is an update. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, Let's see what version this gets us to. <laughs> yeah, this version of Chrome is from 2016, so it's definitely been a while since this thing was used. So they probably just bought this thing around 2015 or, you know, maybe a little bit after it came out and then used it for a little while and then uh, replaced it or just threw it in a box somewhere and uh, that that's where it sat probably until uh, I bought it uh, from the seller on eBay. So we're getting uh, close here, 97%. I'm curious to see what version we're going to get to and you know it might take us going through a couple updates to uh, get to the latest version because I've certainly seen that happen before but hopefully it'll do it all in one go here okay we just got to restart and we're back so let's see what that got us up to yeah we're on 53.0.2785154 now so look yeah it looks like we're gonna have to go through uh i imagine a couple of these uh to get <laughs> to get this thing updated let's see what version we're on now like what uh what year this is from it looks like this is still from 2016 um yeah the other 52 version was also from that was from like august 2016 uh, this one we're running now is from October, so, um, yeah, I hope we, uh, <laughs> I hope we can, uh, do this a little bit quicker than, like, updating, you know, one major version number each time. Alright, so after a little while, we're back. I did have to go through, I believe, three more updates to get to where we are now. And this is, according to the settings page here, it says our Chrome bit is up to date with version 72.0.3626.122, which is a build from March 5th, 2019. So it seems like the Chrome bit, even though it was technically supported till 2020, didn't actually get an update uh, pushed out past March 5th of 2019, uh, which is rather interesting but let's just uh, mess around with the os a little bit it's been a while since i have done stuff with chrome os so this will be kind of cool to um, experience again i mean of course it's a pretty basic operating system very easy to figure out how to use um, looks like we've got an Asus folder here. Okay, that's the registration tool, I guess. So yeah, or just it just takes us to asus.com slash support. And you know, this is where we would enter in our serial number and all that stuff. Uh, but it's not like doing that's going to really do anything for us now because if there was any warranty, I mean, it's it's long, it's long uh, expired by now. Um, so we've got our files program here. I actually wanted to plug in a USB drive. I got a USB flash drive here. I'm going to pop that into the USB hub. I don't think I've done this with a Chromebook before, or just a, a Chrome device, but it should. Uh, yeah, there it is. It should just show up in here just fine. Uh, so here's all this random, uh, <laughs> all this random stuff that I've got uh, on this USB drive just from other video projects and things. Um, so why don't we, um, let's copy my uh my bliss photograph and just copy that over to the downloads folder here and yeah set as wallpaper that's what i want to do so there we go isn't that nice though it's not um it is a little bit uh positioned it's like zoomed in let's try to go into settings here and let's search for wallpaper open the wallpaper app okay so it's an entirely separate app oh there's a bunch of like images and stuff you can choose from that's cool oh center and center cropped, yeah, this is not like, I mean, it is cropped, like, I guess from the center just to fit uh, the uh, resolution that, that this thing is currently running at. But it's not fitting the entire image on the screen. It doesn't look like we get the option to do that, unfortunately. Now, this is interesting. It says update Chrome to start sync, which we already... Wait a second. Is... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Updating your device? Okay. Um, <laughs> well... Uh, I guess I was wrong. It said, I, I, I swear I did this before. I clicked on check update and it said it was up to date. I guess it was wrong or th that was a fluke or something. So, okay, uh, I'll just let it continue <laughs> updating then. But, you know, we're just going to roll with it. I already started taking a look at the OS, so I can't really, uh, I can't really backtrack now. So, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what, <laughs> what version it gets us to now. All right, so we're back and there's been some developments. Number one, it did not actually complete the update. It said that it had updated... And then I restarted the system and we were still on the same version. 
and then you go back in here to the about Chrome OS menu and it says it's going to update again. This is a problem that other people have had with this particular version of Chrome OS running on the Chrome bit, maybe on other Chrome OS devices as well, but I've seen specifically, in fact, there's a YouTube video that I found of somebody showing you how to um, update the Chrome bit to the latest uh, supported version, which is actually 86.0.4340.198 from late 2020. And there is a process that you can go through to factory reset the Chrome bit and then restore it from an image containing that newer version of Chrome OS. But I decided that I'm not going to go through that process at least right now um, because you know it's not going to make much of a difference in the grand scheme of things it's still going to be an outdated version of Chrome OS just by a few less versions in fact I think something more appropriate to do for this channel would be try to restore this thing back to its original software version but just know that if you do have one of these things and if you're experiencing this update loop like I am you are able to get around it by going through that factory restore procedure um, so yeah, it's just, see, it just said it like installed the update, right? And then we hit check for updates again, and it'll just say updating your device. One of the things I was definitely going to do, though, was uh, try to get access to the Linux terminal, because that is something you can do from Chrome OS devices these days. But unfortunately, that is not supported with the Chrome bit here. It's not one of the devices on the supported list over on that help page on Google's website. But maybe there's another video idea there, trying to get a, uh, a more traditional Linux distro on this thing. But yeah, honestly, there's not not really a whole lot to explore because of how web-based that Chrome OS is. I mean, you've got basically a bunch of shortcuts in here to websites. So you've got the Chrome browser. Files is like a separate program, you know, where you can actually browse uh, the, the file system somewhat on your device. Um, we also have a calculator program as well. Uh, so here's that, and we'll just open that up, maybe drag it off to the side. It's so rad, dude. Oh my gosh. Um, and... <laughs> Let's go back in here. Yeah, you got get help, settings we've been in, camera. Why is there a why is there a camera application? I mean, I guess if you want to plug in a USB webcam or something. But of course, we got YouTube, Google Play Books, Google Keep, Drive, uh, and then we got, you know, shortcuts to Sheets, Slides, and Docs individually, Gmail, uh, because, you know, of course, we have a text editor here. Um, so that's that, that's nice. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> plenty of you have probably used Chrome OS before. You're already familiar with a lot of this stuff, so there's not really much um, that I can say here. But you know what I do have much to say about? How easy it is to create a website with today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're creating a portfolio, a personal blog, or even an online store, their beautifully designed templates can help you get up and running in no time. Just use the template selector to find one that'll perfectly fit your site's theme, or build your own with Squarespace's new blueprint tool. Either way, you'll be able to take advantage of their fluid engine to drag and drop images, text boxes, and buttons wherever you want to make your site your own. And if you're going to be selling products, whether physical or digital, Squarespace makes it easy to customize your list things however you want and let your audience know about new offerings and promotions through email campaigns. So if you've got a great idea for a website, head on over to squarespace.com slash michaelmjd to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And huge thanks again to Squarespace for making this video possible. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to say about the Google Chrome bit, uh, which is definitely, you know, one of the weirder Chrome OS devices to ever come out of Google just because of like how specific of a use case you would need to have for this thing uh, to consider buying it. I mean, I would imagine for the average consumer, you know, who's in the market for a Chrome OS device, a Chromebook nine times out of 10 is going to make the most sense. I mean, there's a reason why they're the most popular Chrome OS device category, but that's not to say this thing is entirely useless. I mean, I think if you had wanted to get a really easy to set up, pretty cheap computer, uh, to maybe have out in your garage, maybe if you want to make like a workbench computer and you had like a TV out there, you could hook this thing up. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space at all. You just plug a keyboard and mouse into it, plug it in, and you're good to go. Maybe you want like a little home theater PC just for browsing the web. This could absolutely do that for you. I think especially in the enterprise and business world too, I mean, this is a really easy way to convert like an older TV into a, you know, sort of smart TV. Maybe if you want to have one out in the lobby to run through a slideshow as people walk in or in a conference room to do presentations, this could absolutely do that as well. 
So it's definitely not useless, but it was useless enough for Google to quickly decide to kill it off after only having one of these things, one model ever produced. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this video and want to get early access to my future episodes, I do have a Patreon you could check out, or you could hit that join button to become a channel member. But either way, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.